Welcome to Spirit School. My name is Danielle Serenk, also known as the Squamish Medium. I am the host of your Spirit School, where I will share all the lessons and learnings that I have uncovered through my intuitive development and mediumship development journey. I am a professional psychic and medium and intuitive teacher and mentor, and I look forward to walking alongside you on this journey. Hello everyone and welcome back to Spirit School. This is your final episode of 2019. And can you believe that this is my 51st podcast episode on Spirit School? You might not be able to believe it, but I can't believe it. I can't believe I have been posting consistently for over a year. Doing this podcast was something that I wanted to do for a very long time, but every time I went to record an episode, I would delete it right away because I was suffering for a very long time with imposter syndrome, and also I'm such a big podcast fan myself, so of course that comparison comes up often. So I'm very excited to still be be here and super excited and energized around this podcast and continuing to do so. Now, this is your January energy forecast episode, but it's also a year in review. So I kind of wanted to just give my year in review, and I'm sure you have your own, but anytime I seem to share some personal experiences, I get messages from people around the world saying thank you for sharing that, and they see pieces of their own self in my story. So I really kind of wanted to share some of the highlights um, of 2019 when it came to Danielle Serank and the Squamish Medium business. So I do typically have a word for every year, which is very common, very accepted. Um, I don't make so many resolutions per se, but I definitely have a word I try to live by. So for 2019, I chose the word courage. Because even though a lot of people look at me and say, oh, you're so courageous, you're so brave about being out in the public and, you know, having a public profile and doing this podcast amongst other things, but inside, even the most courageous person still feels very frightened. And there was a lot of things that were holding me back in my practice and in my development journey because of fear. And I still suffer with a lot of them, but I have made huge headway in 2019. So... This podcast is a perfect example of something courageous that I did. Again, I wanted to record them, and I did record them for so long, and I just couldn't do it. I just, I kept feeling like, what do I have to share with the world that hasn't already been said by amazing people already? And the message that spirit kept bringing me was like, why don't you believe in yourself? Like we believe in you. We bring you these ideas. We bring you these inspirations and it's up to you to grab a hold of them and run with them. So one day last year, I got really sick. I've talked about this many times on my podcast. I was in hospital. I was hooked up to a heart monitor for about a month. It was a very serious ordeal. And about a month after that, I was off work for a few months, my corporate job as well as I couldn't do readings for a couple months either um, because of my nervous system damage that was done through that experience. But one day... I was reading the Jensen Sarah book, uh, You're a Badass, and she said something that changed my life. And I'm sure people have heard this many times before, but I hadn't. And it was done is better than perfect. It's like a freaking light bulb went off in my head when that happened. And I went upstairs to my computer and I had eight episodes left that I had not deleted for whatever reason throughout the year of 2017 or 18 it was. And I just posted them all. So December 22nd, 2018, this podcast was born. I published, I think, eight episodes over the course of a week because it turned out if I wanted the free version, I couldn't post them all at once. And I just put them out there. Super brave, right? Well, then what happened was I posted them and continued to record them and post them, but I didn't tell anybody. Now, I posted them in December 22nd, and I believe the first time that I actually socialized that I had a podcast was May, so five months in. Five months in was the first time on my social media where I said, hey guys, I have a podcast. Yeah, there's like 30 episodes out there now, so enjoy. (laughs) Just kidding. There's like 20 episodes by then. But you can see what I mean. I did something courageous, but fear was still there. Fear still kept me small. 
Fear still kept me in the passenger seat of my life. And once I started socializing it, I had people wanting to be interviewed. So then I started interviewing people. And I really enjoyed the interviewing aspect. And I just kept going with it because I love it. To be honest with you, this podcast is one of my favorite things I do in my business. And it's free. I don't even know if I've gotten like too many bookings from this podcast or whatnot. But just sharing this and understanding I may not get anything back from it is fine to me. I have so much fun. I enjoy doing this podcast so much and it actually makes me feel like I'm serving my purpose more than even doing readings. Just sharing with you guys the experiences that I go through, that I have gone through and overcome and all that I know about mediumship and spiritual development paths. So thank you. I raise my hands to you for listening and tuning in consistently. And one of my big successes of 2019 is my goal was to get 10,000 downloads, which to me was like unfathomable. Like I couldn't even imagine getting 10,000 people listening to my podcast. But not only did I get 10,000 downloads this year, but I got almost 15,000 downloads on this little podcast that I've only been socializing for six and a half months. And I'm just like totally blown away. I have downloads now in over 28 countries every week. Um, So I have a lot of people listening. And this has single-handedly, as a teacher in this craft, been one of the most just amazing things I could have done for myself and for the people that I serve. So thank you for listening. This was the most courageous thing I did in 2019, and I'm going to continue to do it in 2020 with this podcast, and I'm also doing a podcast project with my best mediumship friend, Melissa White Medium, and we're doing a podcast called Spirit Room, which will actually launch next week, and we're launching eight episodes, so tune into my social media on Instagram at Squamish Medium, and I will be posting all the details there. And you'll totally want to subscribe because we talk about some pretty taboo stuff and really fun stuff when it comes to psychic medium work, including ghosts and paranormal stuff. And you may be a little bit disappointed with our philosophies on this, but you know, me and Melissa have a lot of aligned thinking and we consistently surprise each other as well when we're talking about our different philosophies. So you know, she was probably my most downloaded interview in 2019 on Spirit School. We had so much fun. We initially wanted to do this podcast together, but she is a busy medium. So it was so hard to get times nailed down. And so we did dedicated to do this new podcast spinoff, which I will still continue to do Spirit School. And you will also see the Spirit Room on iTunes and Spotify and everywhere else that you can listen to your podcasts. Interestingly enough, I am in Instagram jail. I had a post that went viral, um, I think it was about four weeks ago. I do meme roundup Monday, spiritual memes. Memes are absolutely my favorite thing in the world. I can die laughing watching a meet or watching a meme or seeing a meme that totally resonates with me. So I gather them throughout the week and I post them every Monday. And one Monday I had a post that went viral and it was like, Nothing I'd ever experienced before in social media because I know I've talked about this before too, but when it comes to my Instagram, it's a sacred space for me, so I don't play any Instagram games. I don't do follow for follow. I don't follow like mega teachers if I don't really resonate with them. I literally am just like myself and I just trust whoever stumbles across my page will enjoy it and vice versa. So I've grown my Instagram audience to 1,300 now. In the past year, I think I've grown it by like 1,100 people just from being myself and not playing any games. Well, I had a post that went viral and I went from seeing a few hundred engagements on a post to 10, over 10,000 in one day. And ever since then, I don't know if people flagged my account or flagged it spam, but now Instagram's not showing any of my content to anybody who's not on my list. So apparently I have to not post for a while and not interact on my page for Instagram to remove that block from my account. So whatever that means, this whole social media world, I just wish it could just be like fun. Um, but it is a business tool. So what are we saying? We're literally just going to stick with it because I love Instagram as everyone knows. So I will post more details on all that as soon as I can. Now, another thing that I did that was very courageous this year 
was I quit my job twice. Now I am in the corporate world. I have a very high paying, easy corporate job in an organization that is full of purpose and meaningful. And I'm one of the original people there. I think I was the 38th hire. Now there's over a thousand people. So I'm very respected in the organization. Um, so it, it feels good to be there. But the truth is like, I got a promotion two years ago and I ended up in a department that was so toxic. It is actually what caused me to be hospitalized last year because of the toxicity. Um, just, I, I talked about on the toxic in the workplace episode with Becca Francis. So you can go back if you want more details on all that, but I quit my job in March and I won't give you all the details, but my CEO took me out for lunch and convinced me to stay, but nothing changed over the course of two months. So after two months of waiting, I handed in my resignation again. I said, look guys, you know, thanks for trying, but I, I just got to go. I can't be here anymore. And I was going to go into my Squamish medium business full time. And I was so excited about it. And then right before I was going to make the leap, I had my second spiritual teacher, my second mediumship teacher denounce mediumship instead of following God and Jesus path. So born again, Christian, Um, my first teacher did not go born again, Christian, but did have an experience with Jesus and stopped doing mediumship and spoke out against it pretty much on social media. And then my other mediumship teacher after that, who was a beautiful experience, we had such a deep connection. She had a experience with Jesus and she turned her back on mediumship and denounced me and speaks vehemently against it now, much like Doreen Virtue, her path um, that she has taken to be a born again Christian and follow the path of Jesus. And hey, I love Jesus too. Don't get me wrong. And I'm not judging, but literally the week before I was about to leave my job to go into full-time mediumship, you have to understand where I was at. I was questioning my path for the first time. I was questioning my path. I was like, hey, two teachers that I respected gave it up because they think it's a sin or whatnot. It totally messed me up. And then a couple days later, my mentor at the organization called me and said, look, you have a job with me starting tomorrow. Do you want it? And I said, basically, yes, because I was freaking out at that point. But to stay on target with the podcast episode, I did technically quit my job twice. And it's funny because I was considering leaving again this month and things keep coming up. I ended up getting sick twice, like so sick. You could probably still hear it in my voice. Like couldn't, couldn't get out of bed, couldn't talk. You know, my husband ended up falling ill and he can't work right now. And like all this stuff keeps coming up. So every time for three years now, I go to make a leap to go to full-time mediumship and full-time in this practice, a whole bunch of things come up. And I know that those are not necessarily signs that I shouldn't be doing it, but I think spirit is really kind of saying, how bad do you want this? But in truth, I know enough now being on this path for six years that there's no right time or wrong time. There's no such thing as missing an opportunity. This is really spirits going to allow me to leap and be successful when I'm dang well ready. And it may take me, you know, five jumps on that diving board before I actually jump into the water and spirit will support me in whatever I choose, whenever I choose. So this is my fourth time trying to make this leap and still kind of like unsure if I want to do it or not. It's so funny. I know there's going to be people listening to this podcast episode, just like doing forehead slap because I've talked about it so many times, but the truth is I like my safety and security. So it's definitely going to be something that's going to challenge me. So I'm going to carry through the word courage into 2020 because this is something I still want to do. And I'm just waiting for the time to feel a little bit more right. Now, just on to two more things I wanted to talk about 2019 before I hop into the January forecast. And sorry, I was actually initially intending on doing all this after the forecast, but for some reason I just batted out. So I'm just going with the flow right now. Now, in March, I was able to go see Rebecca Campbell live in Oregon with one of my best friends, Christy Pike, the intuitive marketer, and we got to go to a full day workshop with her. Now, Rebecca Campbell's book, Rise, Sister, Rise, completely changed my life. It changed my life and it changed my spiritual practice 
fundamentally. And now when I do the energies every month, I'm actually using Rebecca Campbell's Work Your Light Oracle deck. And she has a new Oracle deck, Starseed, coming out next week, which I'm so excited about. But we went through this chanting exercise, and I'm not going to give you the whole experience because I'm not ready to talk about it yet in full. And when I have these really deep, impactful experiences, I really hold on to them with like sacred container mentality until I'm ready to talk about it. Um, but I did have a Shakti experience where I received a very deep cellular ancestral energetic healing in this space to the point where I could not stop crying. And I don't cry very much. (laughs) Well, I do and I don't. But it was, to me, an incredibly life-changing experience. And I could have walked out of that workshop an hour in after having the experience saying, okay, this was worth the trip. This was worth the drive. I drove over a thousand kilometers to get there and back and, you know, paid quite a bit of money. And I was like, nope, this was worth it. Now, I will do a separate episode on Shakti experiences because I have had two in my life now, and I think that they're worth talking about on the podcast, but that was a huge highlight of 2019 for me, and just getting to hang out with my friend Christy, who I love and adore, and she's my business bestie, and just, I loved hanging out with her on that road trip, so I definitely want to do more road trip with girls um, in the future. Now, the final thing I wanted to talk about, which was a real highlight for me in 2019, was my Indigenous Entrepreneurs Grant. So I'm a First Nations Canadian woman. I'm half Swampy Cree and I'm half Canadian, I guess you'd say. You know, my my lineage goes back to Scotland. So I always say I'm half Glaswegian and half Cree. Um, But I was able to apply and I received an Indigenous Entrepreneurs Grant, um, which was allowed me to get a proper website, a proper booking system, this podcast, this laptop I'm on, the mic I'm using, um, and my rebrand. So I was able to actually rebrand to my little sage and moon leaf, which I love so much. And I used Featherlight Design for that. Give a shout out to her. Lani is amazing. And this really upscaled my presence. Um, But it also made me feel a little bit more legit. You know, it's kind of interesting because there's a lot of people slamming, you know, the super polished business look. And, you know, I never thought of myself as being a business, first and foremost, because I'm a spiritual entrepreneur, but it's a practice. But it is a business. I pay taxes with it. I collect money. Soon I'll have to start charging my own GST taxes. So it is a business. And it made me feel like a business. It made me feel established and it made me feel, um, you know, just up leveled in a way. So I felt so grateful for that whole experience of going through that branding exercise and working with another goddess on, you know, what does Squamish Medium feel like? Where's my interest going? Uh, Where do I see myself going? Who's my ideal client? Who are the people who are drawn to me and attracted to work with me? And so that was very phenomenal uh, experience for me. And especially going through that grant process. And when I got it, like I literally cried and I felt like, wow, these people really believe in me. They believe in me despite not having a firm business plan because I explained to them, I work in the realm of possibility and I work in the realm of inspiration. So I can't give you a business plan and say, by next year, this time I will have XXX clients because I might not want to do one-on-one stuff. I might only want to do group stuff or I might not want to do group stuff and just do one-on-one stuff. I follow the cookie crumbs that spirit leaves me until they don't feel good anymore. And they still gave me the grant and I love them for it. A um, couple other things. Obviously, I got my end of life doula certification training, which I've always wanted to do for the past few years. Um, and as I head into 2020, and I'm going to try not to digress too much, again, I'm not doing the resolutions and I'm not doing a single word. Basically, I sat down and assessed how do I want to feel in 2019? And I'll be honest with you, I am. I started 2019 and I'm ending 20, 2019 really sick, 
ill, burnt out. That's what the winter time does to me if I push too hard against the natural rhythms of Mother Earth, which is telling me to slow down and go inwards, go back to devotion, less serving. But in the corporate world, guess what? You can't go to your boss and say, I'm kind of in my winter season, so I can't really like answer all these emails. <laughs> But in my business, I can. And right now I'm in a six week break as I honor my winter rhythm, go inwards, love myself fiercely, reconnect with my own spirit, reconnect with the world of spirit as the veil is so thin during this time. And, you know, I, I don't know what to say about that other than I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick. And when you're sick, you don't feel very connected. You don't feel very creative. You don't feel very inspired. And that's a shitty feeling. And so nothing makes you more clear on what you want than when you feel awful. And so I really decided, I was toying with the idea of making my feeling and my words going into 2020 conscious consumption, Um, but I've actually changed it. And how I want to feel in 2020 is clear, content, and vibrant. Now, I want to do a whole episode on this, but I just kind of want to give you a little bit of what I'm going through right now, and I wouldn't talk about this if I I wasn't already in it, but mediums are typically not very healthy people. You know, we work with the realm of energy and sometimes that energy become, become quite taxing, no matter how many energy management tools you have under your belt. Um, it's just, we're open channels. And even when we tighten up our aura, like I teach my students, you know, the world of spirit still sees you open for business and ready to serve. So we're continually sensing, discerning energy, and that can make you quite tired. And that coupled with my adrenal fatigue from my health incident last year, I haven't felt super clear this year. Again, this could be part and parcel why I have a hard time deciding to leave my job and go full time or just staying status quo and continually getting sick and burnt out in this like vicious cycle for the past four years, but I'm not clear. Even my Squamish medium business, I love doing readings. I love teaching and it's like, I'm not even clear on how big I want to go or do I want to stay the same? Am I happy where I am? Am I content or do I want to continue to go upwards and, and grow my business and grow my practice? And the truth is mediums, because we work in the realm of energy so often and we have chosen to be open channels, we tend to sometimes cope in not so healthy ways. So we can tend to overeat or smoke or drink and all this is fine. It's fine to like smoke pot once in a while. I'm not against at all or using CBD oil or having a glass of wine a day. But when you're using these tools, including food, to cover something else or cope with something, then it's not healthy. And you can feel it because when I use some of these tools to try to ground myself or to numb myself a little bit, then I'm totally out of sync and out of alignment with my spiritual path and my and my spirit being, if that makes any sense. So I'm realizing that I'm starting to use these tools and they're actually dragging me down quite a bit. So I realized that the healthiest and most vibrant I ever felt was after my near-death experience in 2016 and I was pregnant with my son and I ended up with gestational diabetes and I had to follow a diabetic meal plan which was actually like 3,000 calories a day, but it was eating every two hours, balancing proteins and carbs. And I tell you, I entered that birth room like I could lift a car. I had so much energy. And you talk to anyone who's 10 months pregnant and ask them if they had energy, they will say, hell no. But I had so much energy because of the way I chose to eat and I took it very seriously. So recently I've actually started not having a glass of wine a day, only having a glass of wine when I'm out like at a restaurant with my husband or, you know, having wine with my girlfriends, not coming home and pouring a glass like I typically did after a day of work because it really brought my vibes down. I will tell you in just the very short time that I have made these changes, my energy levels have completely soared. So I will be documenting this path on my Instagram. I'll probably just do a few stories and then save it as a highlight if you are interested. But I'm very curious to see 
like my goal going into like clear, content and vibrant is around my physical health and my relationships. It's not around my mediumship development. It's not around my spiritual development, but I know and I trust that making these changes to better my physical and mental, emotional and spiritual health will in turn help my readings, help my teaching, help my connection with spirit. So I'm making these changes and I will keep you posted on the path and I will do a full episode on this very topic, but I just kind of wanted to give you a little bit of my thought process heading into 2020. Okay. So thank you so much for sticking with me this far and listening to me. And I hope that, um, some pieces of my story, you'll see a little bit of yourself in and start you maybe thinking about, Hmm, I should look at my year and review like that. Or those are some good questions. Maybe it will help you on your, your path heading into 2020. So heading into the energies of January, 2020, right? Everybody's making such a big deal. It's like, it's the last week. It's the last decade. It's, you know, it's so funny. Um, but of course, if we were to follow the astrology year, we're only like three quarters of the way into the year. But of course we use like the Julius Caesar calendar. Um, and so January is a new year. And so, of course, the energies are definitely going to be feeling hopeful, feeling, you know, this clean slate coming on, which is such a good feeling. But because I live by the rhythms of Grandmother Moon, every new moon is a clean slate. It's almost like I get that satisfaction every month following those rhythms. Um, so these are just some of the obvious things that I pick up on for January 2020. But I'll be honest with you. We just came out of an incredibly intense Capricorn season. You know, I'm not an astrologer, but I know that there was like six different aspects and planets in Capricorn, including the south node of past karma. And so I think a lot of us are entering 2020 feeling a little bit beat up, like feeling a little bit like we just ran a freaking marathon. And so I feel like this year amongst every other year, we're going to feel like a little less <laughs> like what spirit's showing me right now is like running a marathon and you actually like tumble over the the finish line. <laughs> so, you know, I do want to say though that there is some reward after this year. Um, I think you could look at any year and be like, oh, it was a great year. Oh, it was a really hard year. And of course we typically remember the bad and not so much the good, but, um, you know, that's, that, it's, it's an intense time. It's a very intense time. And we're also entering eclipse season. So everything is completely heightened and accentuated. Okay. Crystal lovers have no clear quartz around you at this time. Okay. If you are totally vibing with what I'm saying and you're like, yeah, it's been intense. And I definitely feel like I'm stumbling across this, um, new year's line, then please do not have clear quartz around you because that's an amplifier. You want to have black tourmaline around you. You want to have black onyx. You want to have even like rubies coming up for me right now. Um, you want to have some really dense earthly crystals. Okay. Um, so what else is spirit bringing me? Um, okay. Let me just see here. So there's definitely, there's this yearning for connection that everyone's having right now. And it's like, you feel connected because you're on social media. You feel connected because you're talking to people all the time. But I feel like everything's very surface right now. There's this yearning to go deeper with people. So there's this yearning for like real sisterhood connections, real connections with your partner, like renewed connections, but not surface. This is deep stuff. This is the stuff that you know, makes you feel content, if I can use that word again. So there's this real encouragement from spirit, you know, to join a group to, you know, I'm, I'm all in business mind right now, but like, I'm seeing the example of like a master class, if that's what they're called. You know how like Oprah has her master class. It's almost like learning and having like this de spiritual devotion and growth in a group atmosphere, um, which is interesting for me because a lot of my stuff from now until April is one-on-one -on -one and maybe I have to reconsider some of that given this little message. And it's also not forgetting about your family. So spirit 
when we're on the spiritual development and spiritual curiosity journey, we tend to leave our loved ones behind in some level and they feel it and we'll see our relationships and our connections change because of it. And so you need to know that I feel the souls of the little families, this is partners, this is sisters, this is parents, this is children, kind of like wanting you to turn around and face them and and kind of bring that new energy that you have based off of everything you've been growing and developing on and using that energy towards them. I tell you, I I can't say this enough. I feel like 2020 is really going to be a time of like going back to the more simpler connections with family. This is actually sharing meals at the table together. This is cooking one meal instead of three meals for the picky eaters. This is like spending real quality time on weekends. This is not just dropping your kid off at swim lessons. This is getting in the pool with them saying, you know what? You go swim. I'll swim with you before class. I'll hit the hot tub during your class and I'll swim with you after. This is real deep rooted connection that is being called for in January and onwards. So please, if this resonates with you and you feel like, yeah, you know what? I have actually put my family second and third um, lately while I've been on this like super cool and interesting spiritual path and this healing journey, um, I'm ready to put them first again. And trust me that the path will catch up to the work that you're doing that's not necessarily focused. Now, interesting enough, I just pulled the no card. Um... So what I want to say about this, I have never pulled this card before, ever, ever, ever. I've had this deck since it came out. I have never pulled up that card. There is a question that a lot of you are asking, is now the time? The answer is no. What Spirit is saying is that they want you to fill up your well first. They want you to retreat rest and refuel. So in January, especially because we're in Capricorn energy, which is go, 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 go. But with all these planetary aspects that are happening, which are competing with one another, some working in harmony with one another, granted, and depends on where they land within your own chart. But spirit is asking you to kind of go against the grain right now and focus during these really intense times on retreating, resting, refueling, researching, before you make this jump, okay? So, and I'm going to tell you that if you've made the decision and you're just going to go ahead anyways, that's perfectly fine. Everything's going to end up turning out the way it should. You just may have a few extra lessons along the way. And those aren't bad because every every time I've had a hard lesson, hey, I'm able to hop onto this podcast and share it all with you. Um, So just know that that kind of comes up in January too. And I feel like some of you, your vibrations just dropped as I said that. But you know what? February is not far away. Maybe February energies, I'll pull a yes card. But it's just asking you not to, you know, spirit showing me that a lot of the decisions that we're making in this Capricorn energy right now is with our mind. It's with our head. It's with our logic. And spirit really wants us to settle back into our hearts because it's just been a super intense time, rest, come back into ourselves and make our decisions from that place. Okay. So it's not like a no, it's more like just wait a couple weeks, rest, rest little ones. And I just pulled the family card again. So if you could focus on a few things for January, it's definitely going to be slowing, resting, reconnecting with yourself, You know, that could be through meditation or visualization or speaking to spirit or just committing to less and saying no to more. And then also focusing on connecting with those around you. I'm going to say family, but this might be your chosen family. You might not live by family. You might not have kids or a husband. And that's perfectly amazing. I kind of am envious of you right now, (laughs) but you have a chosen family around you and it's about connecting on this deeper level, this deeper, deeper level. And this is around food and this is around conversation. And this is around talking about all the things that are on your mind and in your heart. Okay. It's not just about, you know, I heard this word keeps coming up for me, but like toxic positivity. And I understand sometimes, you know, I used to call it light washing, but sometimes it's a coping mechanism we have to be, you know, positive And like, you know, now we're in like this whole mindset world. It's like, 
I have to think positively for positive things to be attracted to me. No, spirit wants you to get real, right? So don't do toxic positivity. Talk to people about the real shit going on in your life. And I guarantee you, you do that. You offer a safe space for them to talk real stuff to you too, okay? Okay, so I'm just going to leave it there. This has been a very cool episode for me to record, so I hope that you really enjoy it. Please leave me a little review and a five-star rating if you can on this podcast. Check me out on Instagram at Squamish Medium, though I will be quiet for a week because I'm in Instagram jail. Um, And do know, too, that for February and March, I have space for one more mentorship client. So there's four sessions for $750 Canadian. These are very in-depth mentorship sessions for people who are wanting to develop their intuition, their mediumship abilities, connecting with connection with angels, connection with higher self, or you are a practicing intuitive and you're coming across all these challenges. This is what these mentorship sessions are for. And so I'm going to be stopping doing the one-off sessions and asking people to commit to four or six. Eventually, I think I'm actually only going to do six. So if you want to get in now at this price, at the commitment of just four sessions between February, March, and there every other week, then message me on Instagram at Squamish Medium or email me at squamishmediumicloud.com. I literally have space for one more. Then come April onwards, it's going to be more of a program. It's going to be a monthly thing. So you can commit to a couple months, just pay a certain fee every month, and then you get a certain amount of sessions, Voxer access, email access, and all this super fun stuff. I have some really cool things planned. I'm so excited. Um, But that's it for now. I hope you guys enjoy the new year. I hope that you have fun planning and reflecting. And remember always, when in doubt, ask the angels, can I please see my life? Can I see, please see myself through the loving eyes of the angels? And you will see everything that you have experienced in that you're experiencing this very moment with love and grace. Much love to you all.